So this unit is called etymology, which is actually the origin of words. Where do words come from? What is the history of words? How do we study words? How can we break words down? And we're really gonna go basic since it's eighth grade. We're gonna really be focusing on Latin and Greek roots and how by adding prefixes to the beginning of a root or suffixes to the end of a root or prefixes and, and suffixes, we can build a more complex word. And etymology really is understanding where does that root come from? Where does this word come from? So the definition of etymology is the derivation of a word. And if you don't know what derivation means, then you don't know what etymology means. And derivation simply means the source from which something is derived or its origin. So again, the origin that we're going to spend most of our time on will be from ancient Latin and ancient Greek. So the primary source of a word is its root. It's its origin. It's the form of a word after all of affixes are removed, and an affix would be a prefix or a suffix. So a word like act, A-C-T, is a root. It has its own meaning, and if we add a prefix or a suffix to it, then it creates even a different meaning. So I've had students say, well, what, a word, what about a word like fact? It has act in it. Well, it does indeed. However, each part of a word has to have meaning. So A-C-T, act, has meaning, but the letter F by itself does not have meaning. We could say the same thing about a word like cactus. Well, again, it includes the A-C-T, but the letter C by itself has no meaning and U-S is not a suffix. So the word cactus is its own word. So in order for it to be a complex word, each part, the prefix at the beginning or the suffix at the end, has to have a unique meaning. So in the last slide, I mentioned the word affix. An affix is any element such as a prefix, which you add to the beginning of a word, like in re, or a suffix which is added after the root or base word, like shun. So if we take the original root word act, we add re plus act plus shun, we have a word that actually makes sense. We have reaction. Each piece has its own meaning, and the word act is now modified to mean something different with reaction. So the first affix is called the prefix. It's placed before the word or the base or other prefix to modify a term's meaning. You can have more than one prefix in a word. And in the case of react, it means to act again because re means to do it again, like to reread, recook, rethink. So to react means to think again. The other common affix is called the suffix, and the suffix is always put at the end of a word. You can have more than one suffix added to a base or a root word. So for example, in the word kind, you can add ly and kindly. In our original root act, we can add shun, so we can take act and make it action by adding a suffix. So what does etymology have to do with Harry Potter? So the J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter, created the names of characters to really suit their personalities and the actions that they create in the stories. And we're going to take a look at a couple, and I'm going to show you how clever she was, because if you understood etymology, or another word for that would be linguistics, you'd really understand how Harry Potter was going to go and what, how the story actually was going to end. So let's take a peek. So the first character we're going to look at is Bellatrix Lestrange. She's, the, she's a bad girl. She's part of the Death Eaters. She's evil. She's on the side of, of Lord Voldemort, and she wants to do terrible things. And you'll notice that her name, Bellatrix, has the Latin root, belly, and it's typically spelled B-E-L-L-I, but to make her name sound more like a a girl's name. It's Bella Tricks. Now, belly, you'll notice, is found in words like rebellion, rebellious, rebel, belligerent. And all of these words have a, have a common core meaning, and that is to fight and to be warlike. So a name like Bellatrix, the tricks actually refers to female 
or woman. So Bellatrix Lestrange, her name actually means warrior woman. And if you've ever read the books or you've seen the movie, she most certainly is a warrior woman. So here's Lord Voldemort, the other co-star of the Harry Potter series. And his name, Voldemort, even though it was a name he created for himself, is based on two Latin roots, Vol and Mort. So if we look at first Mort, because that's really the key to his name, you think of words like mortal, immortal, immortal, mortician, mortuary, morgue, we could add mortality, immortality, um, mortgage. All of these words have to do with death or to die. And if you know the story, He's, he doesn't want to die. He wants to live forever, and he certainly wants to kill other people. So death and dying is a big part of Lord Voldemort's personality. The Latin root vol, as in volunteer, voluntary, malevolent, volition, all mean in Latin will or wish. So if you think about putting his name together, will die kind of gives it away. If you're not familiar with the story, I've just given you the end, I've given you the ending. Lord Voldemort will die because his name either means wish wish to die or will die. In French, Voldemort actually means flight of death. But if you are somebody who knew your Latin roots that vol meant will or wish and mort meant death or die, you knew that Lord Voldemort was going to bite it in the end. And the last one we're going to look at is Sirius Black. He was Harry's godfather and accused murderer. And his name's Sirius. If we look at if we look over here, Sirius is actually the name of a constellation, Canis Major. And Canis is Latin for dog. And if you know anything about the story, Sirius Black is able to change from a human form to an animal form, and he turns into a black dog. So J.K. Rowling uses this cr crazy, incredible use of, of Latin and Greek to define her characters and to name her characters so that their characters' names mean what these people are. So we're going to be exploring all forms of language this way, breaking words apart, understanding where their roots come from, and really getting this really great solid ability to look at a complex word, break it into its parts, and really learn how to learn words without always having to run to a dictionary. So um, I hope you have a really great time with this unit, and we're really going to have a good time sharing what we learn.